In example 5.2, I'm giving us two functions, function f and function g. We're being asked to define f plus g, f minus g, f times g, and f divided by g. So each one of these will be a uh, brand new type of function created from the two functions that we were provided. So we're going to define four new functions and let's start with uh, f plus g. So for each one of these we're going to need to do two things. We're going to need to come up with what the new equation will look like and then we also need to come up with what the new domain is going to look like. Then we can put those two pieces together and define our function. So as I said we're going to start with the equation so we'll take f of x plus g of x and my f of x expression is 2x squared minus x minus 3 and my g of x expression is x plus 1. So this really just becomes a exercise in combining like terms. 2x squared the negative x and plus x will cancel out and then the constant negative 3 plus 1 will become negative 2. So you can see here that we have the equation 2x squared minus 2 which is different from the equation for f and the equation for g. This is something that's brand new. So we're creating something brand new out of stuff that we already know. So let's go ahead and move on to the subtraction, f of x minus g of x. And you'll notice that the setup is going to look just about identical to what we did for the summation. I write down the expression for f and for g, and then I just swap out the addition for a subtraction. And that's it. But I will have to be careful about the way that I apply the subtraction because anytime I combine like terms, I want to be sure that I honor the subtraction uh, appropriately. So the 2x squared just gets copied down. It's the only term that's, uh, that's like, like that. But when I look at the, uh, the x's, I can see that I have negative x, and then it says minus an x. So that means I should end up with minus 2x, and then finally the constant, this is where you have to be real careful, it says negative 3 minus a positive 1. And that result should be minus 4. And this becomes the new equation for f of x minus g of x. And that is different than even what we came up with for f plus g which is not a big surprise. When I add numbers together, I typically get a different answer than when I subtract numbers if I'm using the same values. So we're definitely uh, on track here with f uh, plus g, f minus g. Let's move on to the product. This will be f of x times g of x. And again, the setup is gonna look remarkably similar to the other um, calculations we did. I'm just going to take out the subtraction sign and replace it with the multiplication dot. But with multiplication, I will not be able to immediately go into combining of like terms like I did with the, uh, the sum and the difference. But instead, I'll need to go through um, a series of distribution. So I'm going to start with this x and distribute it to all three terms in that first grouping. That's going to result in 2x cubed minus x squared minus 3x. And then I'll do one more round of distribution with the plus 1. That'll give me three more terms plus 2x squared minus x minus 3. Now I can combine like terms. 2x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 3. 
So we have one more um, function to create. That's going to be f divided by g. And division is usually the most um, detail-oriented um, one of these to do. You have to be real careful with some of the uh, things that come out of this. But the initial setup is really straightforward. Whatever I have for f of x, I use that to represent my numerator. And whatever I have for g of x, it will represent my denominator. Now when we're working with division, this is the setup. This is it. There's not a whole lot to it. But we also want to be considerate of the potential for um, factors that could cancel. But right now, the only factor that I really have is x plus 1 in the denominator. And if you really wanted to be um, technical here, the entire numerator also has a parenthesis around it, making that one giant factor. But it's a, it's a trinomial. But as it turns out, this trinomial on top will factor. It'll become 2x minus 3 times x plus 1. And that is divided by x plus 1. And that is called trinomial factoring. So if you're a little, little fuzzy on some of your factoring techniques, uh, this is one of the many factoring techniques that you'll be responsible for in this class. Uh, you might want to go back and do a little, little research on that. But once we get past the factoring, you should be able to see that x plus 1 is a common factor in the numerator and the denominator. In other words, we can cancel it out because they are like factors. And that would then give me uh, 2x minus 3. But just because the x plus 1 cancels doesn't mean it cancels out the domain restriction. If I was to go back and look at x plus 1 and set it not to 0, then I would get that x is not allowed to be negative 1. So there's an extra restriction here on this equation that says I'm not supposed to be using negative 1. That will become really helpful when we start talking about the domain. So that's where we're going to go next. The benefit to having the full function notation provided for f and for g is that you get the domain for free. Here's the domain of f and here's the domain for g. They're both all real numbers. Now the idea here is that I want to be able to take the domain for f and the domain for g and I want to figure out what the intersection of those two domains will look like and that is what I'm going to be using for the domain of all of these combinations with the exception of the quotient. The quotient, remember, has to have this extra consideration that x cannot be negative 1. So we'll get there. So thinking about the intersection of these two domains, the way this was done back in section 1 when we first introduced the idea of intersection was with an illustration. So if I take a number line, let's say, just for reference, that's 0. The picture for the domain of f, it should be just a straight line all the way across because the domain is all real numbers. And if I do the same thing for g, I'll use red, um, it is also going to be a line that just goes all the way across, representing all real numbers. Recall that the intersection is interested in the overlap of your two intervals. What do they share in common? Well, if you have two of the exact same uh, interval, then that means they have everything in common already. So the domain is just going to be thought of as all real numbers. That's what it is. So when we go to make our function definition, all of them are going to have that domain um, except for the quotient, as we said earlier. So let's move on to that next phase of function definition. So f plus g is the name of the first function that we created and or at least the first equation that we created and the domain for that will be all real numbers given by f 
plus g of x is equal to 2x squared minus 2. And this is our standard format for writing a function. We have to include the function name, we have to include the domain, uh, it's always going to be mapping to real numbers, and then we will say given by, and we state the equation. Let's do this for f minus g as well. Domain here will be all real numbers, mapping to other real numbers, given by f minus g of x is equal to 2x squared minus 2x minus 4. Now we'll define the product. The name of the product we'll call fg. Its domain will also be all real numbers, mapping to other real numbers, given by the equation fg of x is equal to 2x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 3. And then the last function that we will define is f divided by g. Now f divided by g will not have a domain of all real numbers. It will have at its core a domain of all real numbers, but then we also have to make sure that we exclude the fact that x cannot be 1, or excuse me, negative 1. So we would write that domain as negative infinity to negative 1, union negative 1 to infinity. And this is what's going to map to other real numbers by the equation f divided by g of x is equal to 2x minus 3. So the work that we did on the left side of this uh, problem is the calculation of what the new equation will look like. The actual final answer here is all of the function definitions that we created, which include the equation, but they also include the appropriate domain for that particular equation.